All right, so we're all set up. Uh, somebody sent me this video. It's called Hassan Piker on Mass by Leftist Cuck. Of course, we got the professional streamer set up because this is going to be off to the side while we play Epic World of Warcraft like an absolute boomer. Now, just want you to know that the reason that we have it set up like this is because we are professional streamers here. We like to make sure we credit people's videos that we're going to react to. This way, you know what you're getting when you watch and don't worry if I ever do get up and walk away to go to the bathroom I will you will just you will just see a blank chair for a period of time anyway guys I gotta tell you okay I am super upset because Hassan body shamed me yesterday and it made me so sad and I cried and what I find still funny is that there is a there's like one person in the comments at least it was like one person but they were like oh my god you're so sensitive because I named the video Hassan Hassan Piker body shamed me because it was just funny and stupid and then I edited myself to be crying in it and he actually thought I was crying so you know big ups to Hassan's fan base that doesn't know uh, what obvious cr like fake crying looks like um, like if we could just I'll literally show you the thumbnail really quick just to enforce my point um that it's very clearly fake <laughs> you can just see that you guys are insane you guys are crazy anyway let's get this bad boy started drama because that's the only way he has hold content. on hold on hold on stand drama because that's the only way he has you content love if he's not debating a white nationalist he's going to be playing a video game to like three thousand oh, of his diehard fans that's destiny why are we why are we view shaming streamers hasan that is honestly in the mar if the capitalist marketplace of ideas uh, I can't get this off without breaking it. View shaming is basically like is is basically just like shaming their finances, Hassan. Didn't you know that? You capitalist cuck. Okay. That no one want no one wants to even watch. So he has to create uh, cause drama no matter where he goes. It's so interesting because I feel like Hassan is a drama creation center. Um, but more than that, what I find interesting is like the criticism that he doesn't do things that are always absolutely entertaining because Hassan will do things that he considers entertaining, which is stealing other people's content, which really is taking other people's content and not reacting to it and simply just watching it for his stream. Like you're literally not providing a service at that point. You're, you're, you're stealing people's hard earned labor. That's all you're doing. Um, it's, it's the truth. And so, uh, yeah, it's a little silly. It's like, yeah, sometimes you're not going to be entertaining, especially if you stream for as long as destiny does. Now, of course, Hassan does stream for that long, but, uh, Hassan, again, like, you know, you don't always have to be like doing something that's going to pull in 30,000 views or your top viewership. It's okay to have your down periods and just to chill. And I think that's what makes destiny a much more like an actual like person as a streamer. And I know people are gonna be like, oh my God, Papa God, like you enjoy destiny. Like, yeah, I enjoy destiny. I mean, he's an asshole, but he's honest. And I appreciate honesty more than I appreciate like political correctness because I'm a straight white cisgendered male and I don't have to worry about being oppressed. So I okay so i use my own privilege to enjoy content creators that i find honest okay so cope i don't know what to tell you um but yeah man so like this is little crybaby bullshit shit fit is just so sad dude it's so sad especially since like you're stealing content at least destiny platforms other people that he disagrees with he'll pull anybody in like what are you doing you're crying about like people like like oh honestly i don't care because it doesn't upset me i think it's funny but like you're just like oh papa got's fat and he hates me, so he's bad. And it's like that's literally your entire argument. Like that's oh wow, incredible stuff. Like that's what what a mature fucking perspective. But you're so worried about views that you won't do anything. You won't interact with anybody else. You've like you've you've isolated yourself from like other people that would generally consider you friend, a friend, which they wouldn't probably anymore because you're fucking insane. Um, or, or like anybody to have a conversation with. Like you, Destiny passed you free clout by having conversations with you, and you won't do the same for other people. Like it's really shitty that you only have transactional relationships. I wonder what your personal life is like. It must be like a really upsetting thing. Because I can't imagine that you create a genuine relationship that lasts more than a week. Um, and it's probably why you struggle to be able to get in like an, an actual serious relationship. Um, I mean, that's your problem, brother. <laughs> this, that's your problem, dude. That's My man can't live without it. Everything I said about Biden is true, you oh yeah oh yeah this is coming from the guy who told us that like we deserve 9-11 and here's the thing because there is a defensible position in the argument that like the, that the united states government has created oh, these people are gonna be so stupid i don't know why i just go for this dungeon the united states government has created a situation in which like it was, of course is going to um have the outcome of causing 
9-11, of course. There's, but he didn't do it. He didn't say it to be nuanced and educational. He said it to be fucking divisive and antagonistic. That's all he was doing. He was trying to be... Are these people fucking so stupid? He wasn't trying to make a nuanced like uh, point on the topic at all. So... You know, he was just trying to be... He, this is this is something that I've observed with Son. He doesn't really give a shit about anything I don't think he talks about. I think that he cares uh, to... What he cares about is appearing, like, virtuous. He's like, oh, I'm going to talk about a topic, but I don't really have any emotional investment, and it doesn't really mean anything to me. So I'm going to talk about it in, like, this this way that it's going to really just be divisive, and it's going to cause people to tune out, and it's not actually going to help the, the topic at the end, so... Idiots! Didn't he go to war and, like, literally lose his eye because some Mujahideen, a brave soldier, you know. his eye hole with their dick? Isn't that how he lost his... Dump side. You really trying to find flaws in PewDiePie's channel? And that was that was all that was all of that was just so that he could get on Fox News, basically, because he knew that he could like fucking uh, you know emotionally bake conservatives. And then once he did like these big ticket dramatic experiences, all of a sudden, oh, oh well, I I don't respect people that create drama. Bro, you are a fucking drama machine. Shut up. Channels he likes flaws don't equal the entirety of their content. True. What the f are you talking about, dude? I wonder what context he said that in. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. I'm a son Piker, and this is Bro Tip. I thought you were a social. I feel like that. He, I just got sexually assaulted. <laughs> I'm just sorry. <laughs> that was really creepy. Just don't care about money. Why are you begging for subs? Because I f do care about money. You just got debated. I mean, it's fine. You care about money. Obviously, like there's a conversation about socials and blah blah blah. I don't feel like getting into it. it doesn't matter that much to me right now. What the fuck is happening with this boss? Like, why are we getting shit? Communism, stuff? baby. So, I who is Hassan right Piker? Host of the Young Turks, nephew of Cenk Uygur, and current political streamer. You could find Hassan most days streaming on Twitch in the Just Chatting section. Today, we're going to be talking about why I think Hassan Piker is a toxic reactionary that is detrimental to his own community and liberals as a whole. We're going to be covering his rampant hypocrisy regarding socialism and his whole identity. But to get to the root of that, we have to see how we've gotten here in the first place. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. See that problem? Wait, do it from the front. Do the front like this. Hold on. She's see, look. So bad at this game. Okay. See? That's a problem, Hassan. Look at that. You can't deny that problem that we got going on here. Look at this. <laughs> Hassan. Hassan Piker was born in New Brunswick, New Jersey, but grew up in Turkey and moved back to the States to attend college. The earliest traces I could find of Hassan online is a 13-year-old YouTube channel by the name of Hellboy Hassan. It contains only one video of an animation he made. The Hellboy Hassan username, though, went on to DeviantArt where he posted quite a few drawings and apparently was accused of plagiarism, judging by a comment he made. It looks okay. like he was possibly doing some. Tr what is is this like the actual backstory of Hassan? Like we're actually looking into like his plagiarism arc. Is that what's happening right now? <laughs> what the hell? Hold on. Okay. Bracing and hand copying, and passing it off as his own art. <laughs> is this really Hassan doing this? He's passing off like, is he? Did he really do this? The pro. This is World of Warcraft, art, I think. File died off around February 2008. As wow, what an edgy little nerd. He moved on to other creative endeavors. After Hassan's early run at YouTube and Deviant Art, <sighs> to think that Hassan literally started off just like Hitler. <laughs> he wanted to be an artist. I'm kidding. I know I'm being very hyperbolic today. I'm sorry. Um. Incredible stuff, though. He was able to score a sweet sales position at TYT entirely because of his uncle Chank owning the company. While Hassan was working, 
Well, not just that, but also he's intelligent. I mean, his parents were able to, able to uh, you know, afford incredible education for him. So, of course, you know, so, you know, uh, yeah, he was set up for life, bro. In this sales position, he was thinking, how could he move up into a more public figure on the show? But to do that, he had to think of a way to prove to Chank he has the chops for it. Yep. At the time, one of TYT's biggest endeavors was TYT University. The project focused on college and student life in general. I got a new channel that we're going to launch next week called TYT University. Why did they do so many small projects? Like, why did they go so ballistic, like stretching? I'm assuming he wanted to build this math massive empire that reached out to different people. But oh, my God, it's going to be a great weekly show, a half hour show, and it's going to focus on college, university students, education. This was all during 2016, right? Was that it was this all during like 2016? Because like that's such an unfortunate thing that they probably got a lot of attention because of Donald Trump, which is the truth. Donald Trump pulled a lot of people into politics. And then um like once Donald Trump was out, like it wasn't super interesting. And you had to start cutting costs, bro. You know? It's crazy. Um uh, <laughs> So it's 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 crazy. Like I remember when Donald Trump lost, I was like, "Oh, but I'm not really super interested in politics anymore." I, sh I shifted my 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 platform because, like, what am I gonna do? Pretend that I still know what the fuck I'm talking about? I'm not Hassan, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this ended up being perfect for Hassan, considering he was in college at the time. All he needed was an idea, and that idea he ended up landing on was bro tips. What's bro tips? You might be. What thinking. does that mean? Bro tips? Let's just say it's a chapter of TYT they wish the whole world forgot about, judging by the fact they have done their best to scrub this from the history of the internet. Wow. The entire hey, series done their best. Hold on a second. TYT they wish the whole world forgot about, judging by the fact they have. Just the tip: how to be an alpha male. Wow, incredible! I didn't realize that Hassan Piker was in high, was a high value man, local legend and social guru. Wow. Hassan really fancied himself as a uh, wow as this, as a high value man. Have done their local legend and uh, and social guru Hassan Piker talks about how to be an alpha male in order to attract others. Tweet at some person for suggestions and comments. Also tweet at it if you want me to send you nudes. Female humans only. Holy moly! Did we ever get a public apology with crying for for this Hassan? Have you ever issued a public apology with crying and tears, Hassan? Huh? Because, I mean, this is what, that's what happened. He's at. just the tip. Let's get out of here. Rule. Oh, Describe my goodness. From the Doctor of kinesiology and self-proclaimed internet legend, Hassan Piker, brings you the second installation of the widely popular internet sensation, Just the Tip. Watch and take notes, and maybe you'll get laid for once. Wow. History of... Just the tip. Okay, the five the second internet. rule. Social guru Hassan, like you really fancy yourself as a social guru. Hassan Piker gives you an essential rule that has been passed down from the earliest legends that pertains to approaching the opposite sex. No matter about sex, Hassan, sex doesn't exist. Okay, it's all everything's genders. No matter what you're into, guys, girls, or even horses, I don't know. You should always try to apply this rule. Incredible. Honestly, Hassan, I am going to need you to write out a written Instagram apology followed by an Instagram story with a black and white filter and actual tears in it because that is incredible. The yeah, I heard he was transphobic too. I just have never seen it before. Entire series has long been deleted off YouTube. But you know what they say? The internet never forgets. Whoa. Bro Tips was started as a blog that focused on frat boy tier content that really doesn't align with TYT and Hassan's current image. Yeah. The blog. I like. I like the choice of words there. They said the current image rather than saying like his current like ideology because I don't think that he actually gives us a fuck at all. Um, about his like what he actually thinks i think it's all idea i think it's just like all the way he looks i think it's it's all just about uh, like the just way he looks at optics right focused you know? on topics like babe of the week shots fired and just the tip he went on to produce hard-hitting articles like just the tip the cold call and this 70 year old man redefined the game of getting off 
I guess these articles must have impressed Chank because he was allowed to adapt the blog into a series for TYT University. It was Wow, what a what an assassination move for for Chank. Jesus. Made under the same name as his blog, where Hassan gave frat boy tier advice with heavy misogynistic undertones. Like Most what? of which is heavily at odds with TYT's current image of progressive politics Yo. and respecting women. We also have someone here who did what is TYT.com. It's bro tip. Uh, rare appearance on the program. Haas, um, who also works in our sales department. Yeah, you, you're on. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Uh -huh. um. Advice passed on from brother to brother for the purpose of courting females and acquiring currency. Here's a bro tip. Check out that show, bro tip. Incredible, bro. Wow. The following program contains vulgar language, and due to its content, it should not be taken seriously. These views expressed do not represent TYT or TYT in any way, shape, or form. Incredible stuff. Oh, hey. Didn't see you there. Wow. I'm Asan Piker, and this is Bro Tip. This week's Bro Tip is about bringing out the alpha male in you. A few things to consider when you Oh my goodness, Hassan, where's that apology? Thinking about Lady Gaga as a top contender for Babe of the Week should be the fact that she might have a penis. The fact that Lady Gaga might have a small penis does absolutely terrify me. Here <laughs> like listen, man, we've all like listen, we actually, you know what? I don't know if I've ever gone through a transphobic phase. I don't think that I was ever really transphobic. I've always been like fine with trans women and always pretty accepting. Um, most of like my bigoted phases were ignorance. They weren't like this. You know what I mean? I don't know, bro. Holy shit. That's crazy. Like, I don't, I mean, listen, for all we know, he, he's, he's probably, I don't even want to say he's probably changed because I don't think I see the change. You know what I mean? I don't think I see the change. Usually when people try to suppress information rather than counter it with like intelligent conversation, usually they haven't changed. At least that's my opinion. I feel like people who are desperate to stay away from their past controversies and not like like talk about them when they're re uh, respectfully prompted or brought up, I think that those people are dishonest. Here's why the five second rule works. Okay. Because when you start thinking for longer than five seconds, you're immediately not thinking with your dick and also thinking with this pesky thing up here that we like to call our brains. Incredible. So once you start thinking with your brain, you're immediately going to psych yourself out. Come back again next week when we discuss the legendary question of all time, old enough to count, old enough to mount, question mark? Okay. <laughs> Somebody started laughing, you that? Old enough to mount, question mark? Somebody started to laugh at that. Wow, what a friend. That's a friend. I want to say thank you to Miley Cyrus for huh. showing off her camel toe at the VMAs the other night. Wow. I always knew Hannah Montana was a little <laughs> slut. Don't even try to hide it. Look. Oh man, this is this is really this is really bad. Hannah Montana's a slut because her fucking pussy fell out at the show. Wow, bro, that's a that's incredible. That's a lot. That's pretty heavy stuff, brother. That's a little bit, a little, a little sussy. Um, that's a little sussy. Okay, did I go to the right spot? I don't think I did. Um, incredible. Look, this is a classic example of what happens when your father doesn't pay attention to you. You turn out to be a slut who's craving for attention, and then I tend to pick you up at a bar late night and bang you out on the first date. Incredible stuff. User buddy. Dubstep Piggy says. Just die and stop destroying this channel. Never. Needless to say, these videos didn't go over very well with the progressive audience TYT was built to cater to. The like to dislike ratio was off the charts and the comment section was tearing him apart. Wow. But that didn't seem to bother Hassan much. He even doubled down by having a few of his frat boy friends from Rutgers University come on as authors for bro tips. There is one in particular that I would like to focus on called Pound Town Talk. Okay. The articles he wrote for Hassan and bro tips went along the lines of Depend shields, guards and maxi pads for men. Okay. And rant, f John Ham and his fat ham. Okay. It's not the articles okay. he wrote Agreed. for bro tips that I really want to talk about though. He had his own blog under the same name, Pound Town Talk. You might be thinking, how do I know it's the same person? Well, 
His blog links to a Twitter account, and that Twitter account tagged Hassan's old Twitter handle in a tweet. Not only that, he had a Vine account under the same name where you could actually see Hassan for a brief second. Sun day fun day it's such a fun day as you can see by the mannerisms of the guy in the video and the tag on twitter this is clearly hassan if you still have doubts though pound town talk says in one of his articles that he transferred to oh, rutgers university which is the same university hassan transferred to from Incredible. um so Incredible. that Why settles it oh, this is on. definitely hassan's friend so, what kind of articles was Pound Town Talk doing on his own blog? Hard-hitting articles like Slut Etiquette, The Facial, and Piss Princess. The whole b Pin Piss Princess? Wow, this is awesome, Hassan. What happened to this? This is incredible. You should have just stuck with this, brother. At least it would have been more genuine. This seems to be the real you. Blog was created to show one shameless asshole's chronicle of hilarious or not so hilarious trips to pound town wow judging Great. by the content on the blog it seems like hassan was inspired by this guy to create bro tips you might be thinking why do i care about pound town talk if hassan wasn't the one writing it what does it matter I think it exposes Hassan's upbringing and true character. Take the context of who he surrounded himself with and the fact that he was okay with this guy writing for his blog. Clearly Hassan knew about the Pound Town Talk blog because the guy's author name for bro tips was just that. But somewhere Pound along the Jack. line, Hassan and Chank realized this was a horrible look for TYT. So that's when the great purge happened. They deleted all of the bro tips wow. videos from TYT University and even changed Hassan's Twitter handle. Delete all it's so interesting because like people absolutely can change. I just personally find it difficult to believe that Hassan is capable of change. And the reason is because in order for you to be capable of some kind of a change, you have to be somebody who's willing to take criticisms. Because if you can't take criticism, you can't genuinely change. Just because the outside of Hassan has changed, uh, our, oh, I don't even know if we can say for the better, but we'll, let's just argue for the better. Uh, just because it's, his outside has changed, the way that he expresses himself doesn't necessarily mean that there's anything to reinforce that uh, on the on the inside. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's genuine. And like I I agree, I believe in genuinity and content. It sounds like so far we have like a pattern of him always being like uh, we'll say it's for lack of a better term like a shock jock. You know, he's like that's the kind of thing he wanted to be edgy, he wanted to be shocking, he wanted to express himself in that capacity. And then what do we have here? Oh, look, we you know, we what we fast forward to you know liberal politics, his, his progressive politics and, and his progressive ideologies. And what does he do? He does the same thing, like that whole nine eleven scenario. It's, he he was just trying to be intentionally divisive. So I don't know, man. Like, has he actually changed? Uh, I I don't I don't know. Uh, it just seems like maybe he's he's maintained the exact same energy, just feels more justified uh, in the way that he's expressing it. I mean, I guess I don't really know, but Jesus. All yes, these baby. videos and pictures yes, of your ex girlfriend yes, right baby. now, yes, all baby. of them, all of yes, them baby. on Instagram, on Facebook, yes, baby. every single thing. Yes, baby. Delete, all. delete, delete, yes. keep on deleting. Really but it, it seems like Hassan forgot the username and password to the Bro Tips blog because it remains oh, online shit. even to this day. Okay, so you're gonna need a oh, password. No. Yeah. I'm gonna put it in. After the whole bro tip saga was at an end, it was time for Hassan to transform his persona from frat boy misogynist. You know, I, I, we, we missed that whole, we missed that entire arc though in, in the convenient documentary about Hassan's the genuine uh, documentary about his life. I, I, probably, I thought it was completely accurate, you know, with him uh, saying that he created like Twitch video game politics and he pioneered the way. And like, dude, honestly saying it out loud, what a fucking what a what a what a piece of fucking human scum in all honesty what a piece of fuck because i watched that i still can't post it because it got dmca because they're, they're whatever but what a fucking scum loser thing to do like all honesty you want to be like a douchebag and fucking virtue signal about shit that you don't care about like whatever but then he says that he pioneered the way for twitch politics 
what a what a piece of shit because like you know what he's doing he's trying to rewrite his he's trying to write like destiny out of history you can hate the fucking guy all you want but oh my god like dude even me like i'm not super into politics but i feel like like to an extent that i i do like i do have like a benefit from that space of of people who just sit down and relax even if like i do more drama oriented shit Right. Even if I do that, the comfortability in the space uh, is still there, and like the acceptability of like, oh, po- well, just politics. I like, talk about I talk about fucking drama on here. I, t- I come on and I talk about some bull ass shit sometimes. Sometimes we have real conversations, serious conversations about like, uh, you know, um, different social issues for sure. But we mostly do it through like a like a like an online dr- like drama lens, whatever. Like, I, but I feel like there's enough crossover there because like politics is mostly just fucking like political drama and it's all fucking drama. You assholes know that you're looking for a fucking bloodbath. And then like, what did it, so for this guy to be like, I want to, it's not even just that he wants to take credit. He's not even just like, hey, I want to take credit. He wants to remove credit from destiny. Isn't that such a scummy thing to do? This guy has no accomplishments like for himself to like actually, um, he, there's he has no he has no accomplishments he has nothing that he's like really worked for other than a large platform built off of uh you know the backs of other people and 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 engaging in transactional relationships with like destiny for instance and even like his fucking uncle chank uger and all this other stuff um And then he goes and he fucking snipes Destiny to try to take his fame because he's the only one that's gotten like out of like the you know that that's fear. He's the only one that's popular. Like to like in in a, in a somewhat mainstream setting. Not really in a mainstream setting uh cuz like nobody gives a fuck about any of us, but like almost in a mainstream setting. And like what a thing to do to try to like jump the gun and be like, "Hey, look at me. Nobody's ever going to know who Destiny is cuz I'm just going to fucking like shit on this guy by taking like the clout." It's fucking shame, bro. Like, what's some loser-ass scum shit? To woke socialist bay. And oh, what a transformation it was. We're here with actor and activist Kendrick Sampson. He just got back from North Dakota, where he was protesting against the North Dakota Access Pipeline. Speaking at a high school in Indiana Wednesday, President Barack Obama called for expanding Social Security benefits, saying that the program has become more critical than ever as the American population ages and more seniors come to depend on Social Security in their retirement. Is Donald Trump pro-life or pro-choice? Well, I guess that depends on who you ask. The release of a cat. So interesting because, like, they like genuinely, and I got popular in this time too, and I'm 100% aware of it. That the Donald Trump era was so easy, bro. It was so easy to look like really level headed. It was so easy to just do everything. Like, the second Donald Trump lost, it was like a shift in the atmosphere where people weren't really paying attention to politics. So, like, or, or, and like things were changing. We were talking about like more nuanced topics. And like, I feel like myself and Hassan just couldn't keep up. And again, the only difference is like, I actually realized that I couldn't keep up. So I disengaged for a little bit and like from the, the sphere, you know, I, you gotta, you gotta know your worth. You gotta know your fucking, your place. And then, uh, this guy pulled over here. So I'm going to have to kick his ass. But yeah, man. And it's just so easy. Like these questions, like is Donald, oh, is there hypocrisy? Like this is, this is pretty much every take is, is Donald Trump a hypocrite? And it's like, oh, are you serious? Oh, what a hot take. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, of course he is. What a fucking asshole. It's so easy to, to, to talk about that. You know what I mean? Now it's just like crazy. I guess that's where the exposure comes from. Cache of 60-year-old documents show that ExxonMobil and the energy industry were aware of climate change decades ago. In other news, the sky is blue, the grass is green, and putting an avocado in a sandwich dramatically improves its taste. Is so eager to turn the other cheek when it comes to excusing violence oh, okay. committed by his rabid white supremacist followers. Trans-exclusionary radical feminists are basically people who say shit like this. A few things to consider when you're thinking about Lady Gaga <laughs> as a top contender for Babe of the Week. That's the first... Oh, my God. These fucking morons just don't know how to play. That's the first thing that I thought uh, was like, oh, that video. And then they call back to it. So could funny. be the fact that she might have a penis. The fact that Lady Gaga might have a small penis does absolutely terrify me. Anyway, so what? Hugo had a huge meltdown and came out and said that he's a fraud. Shocking only four people in the world who actually believe that there could be a title such as male feminist. Radical ideologues. Well, I actually don't think that, um, I actually don't know that I believe in, like, the concept of male feminism. Um, because, I don't know, like, I feel like, I don't know, you can be a feminist supporter. I think that part of me is, like, jaded by, like, the concept of a male feminist. Oh, I just did the wrong thing. 
uh, because most male feminists, and I believe Hassan is one of these people, uh, will weaponize their, uh, we'll say closeness, their, their proximity to women that they gain through um, their through their like feminism, their male feminism, to in order to take advantage of women to have sex with them. It seems like that's the primary motivator is like, I want to fuck girls, so I'm going to say that they, they're they valid and fuck them. I've seen it time and time again on the internet between multiple figures, two of which, like, well, multiple figures, uh, uh, you know, several of which I've been involved, well, one of which I've been involved in deplatforming, Joe Rope, because he's a fucking disgusting animal. Um, but we see time and time again, like Modern Warrior, uh, you know, argue with other people in, in the sphere as well. And like the online political sphere, people who like you know sexually harass women and don't genuinely apologize, stuff like that. Um, you just see them that they just seem to use their relationships with, or they. Larry they use, underscore. Thank you so much for the sub, brother. Ray um, towel just subscribed. They utilize their position. They, it seems like they just talk like like positively about women, just so that for like the fucking pussy. It's like oh, oh, you like they talk about it from like a savior perspective. So incredible stuff. So I, I'm not like super into the whole male feminist thing because I think it's just full of a bunch of disgusting men that are doing the same disgusting shit as other disgusting men, but they're being more, but it's more predatory because you expect at least uh, less. I don't know why women aren't smart to it. A lot of them fall for it. I don't get it at all. I really don't get it how women fall for that shit. I guess they have like if you fall for a male feminist, you probably have never been hurt in your life because like you should know. <laughs> seriously because like men will fucking this dude listen men and women are shitty in their own ways but i'll tell you specifically men men will do anything for some fucking pussy and if you don't realize that you have never been hurt in a relationship girl that's why you fall for people like fucking uh that's why for fucking hassan so who claimed that i dr jordan peterson was transphobic they were all somehow taking me out of context look i'm not against trans people existing i'm I'm just against being compelled to call someone by a pronoun other than what I think they should be called. You lied to me? Um. Warlock is not doing shit. Yikes. As time went on, Hassan started to appear on different TYT shows more and more. He even started co-hosting the main show sometimes. After a while, Hassan ended up getting his own series again. Damn, bro. I can't believe he earned that and didn't get any like any aspect of nepotism. Holy moly. Where he would give his Sounds take like he on different way. things happening in the world of politics. He was basically just eye candy for politically ignorant females on Facebook to mop up. This series is oh. what cemented Hassan Piker as... It sounds sexist, but it is kind of true. So, yeah, man. Like I was saying before, like women who've never been like hurt before. They're like, hurt me, Danny Hassan. Hurt me, Danny. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Woke Bay. The series is full of a bunch of politically toxic takes where Hassan goes after all the low hanging fruit the right has to offer. This hey, did well for there, him, brother. and he probably seen himself doing this for the foreseeable future. But he started to have an affair with what would become his true love and inevitable downturn on TYT. Being a toxic political reactionary on Twitch, or what he described at the time as a provocateur gamer. At first, he only did this in his free time, getting little viewership. But after some good old fashioned consistency and hard work, also, maybe a little bit of plugging himself on platforms built by his uncle for TYT. Force them to watch the breakdown and record their reactions so I can play it on my Twitch at twitch.tv slash Asanabi. So if you have any additional... Bro, you know what's so funny? The way that that, that uh, Hassan, like, he lightly touched on this topic where he felt like his uncle was taking advantage of him. But, like, his uncle allowed him to, like, for free plug his Twitch on there, which ended up fucking them over. I feel like Hassan is like, I dude, like honestly, after seeing that, like the way he talked about his uncle was as if his uncle was like this fucking dickheaded asshole who like tried to ruin his career or something in some capacity. It sounds like Hassan was never appreciative of what his uncle gave him for fucking free. That's what it sounds more like. And this guy is like, has like, like he, the way he talks about it is in this like entitled capacity where he's like, <laughs> my uncle, <laughs> 
he platformed me completely and he he wanted me to not do things that would destroy his channel he didn't want me to stream at the same time as the young turks like yeah of course you wouldn't like what it's a business decision and like you you went back on that loyalty like i feel like you know what i mean just so that you could do your own thing and like i get it but also like i mean it sounds like for a guy who took you in as an intern and then let you like live at his fucking house for for rent free uh, I mean, are you kidding me? Like, where's the sense of loyalty? And be like, yeah, I want to help my uncle build this brand. You know, you took this completely fucking selfish route. It's incredible. Questions Give you a whole ass job. Much I suck. You can direct them to me directly at twitch.tv oh, slash Hasanabi, where I'm live every day. Also, for a longer conversation, join me on my Twitch at twitch.tv slash Hasanabi. I'm live every day after 5 p.m. Pacific. People really started to take notice, and his viewership started to really jump. He caught his big break on Twitch when the biggest political streamer at the time, Destiny, yep. featured him on yep. his stream. This would not only skyrocket Hassan into relevancy on Twitch, it would also spark quite the bromance. You know, I'm pretty sure Destiny will uh, fuck this uh, shout out, Shout out to Destiny, by the way. Oh, oh yeah, Please? I forgot oh, yeah. to say, yeah. Oh, uh, you know you know of him, okay. Cool, yeah. Cool. But when I watched that video, I was like, oh, that's cool. So we have like somebody in the gaming community who's actually pushing back. Hell yes, that's actually, yeah. Destiny's the reason that's why really I know cool. about Trihex as well. If Destiny oh was my, my roommate, God. I'd get him late all the time. Oh. I, uh, I I was like, all right, whatever, well, I don't have it. I mean, you don't really need to, you just need to get, he just needs to watch other people get, <laughs> other people get raid, late, how's that sound? I would, I would let you watch me fuck girls every night, Destiny. Thing. Like, I, I don't have anything. Okay, I have no option. I, I'm in the next 11 days. So much so that, like, Steven was uh, DMing me on Discord and saying, Hey, you know what? If you don't have a place to live, buddy, like, you can come stay with me. Oh, look, he, what did he lose his place to live because he fucked over his uncle? Honestly, is that what happened? He fucked over, he's fucked over his uncle. And then uh, that would gave him a place to live. Or he's like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm going to like move or whatever. Oh my god, I can't like function. So it seemed like he lost his job at the Young Turks because he was being an asshole and he was living there for free anyway. And so his uncle's like, well, all right, well, fuck you, bro. If you're gonna leave us, I'm gonna leave you. Is that what happened? It's crazy shit. It's okay. What a good guy. Destiny is a f great guy. Oh yeah, watch out. Destiny's he a horny guy. Real rowdy with that. Here for all of you guys is the uh, here fish and Destiny playing. So fucking crazy. Okay, wait. Hey, listen. God. I love you. What? Um, I told a friend that I would play a game with him, and then I have to get ready for that scuff oh, podcast okay. shit. Listen, don't worry. You're gonna get all my viewers want to watch you watch it. Are gonna go to your stream. Okay. 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 I yeah. mean, no, okay. it's fine. I wanted to watch it with you, but it's cool, dude. Friendship is is uh, just dead, I guess. <laughs> oh, Speedo McGee is your fan that gave me. 200 subs so far. No, no, you're coming. You're coming. You're I coming. thought this was like a. No, I thought no, this was coming, like a convention. Coming, I thought coming. this was like a the Young Turks like office no, Christmas no, no, party. Family party. I told you. Look at how. Oh, why the f what I look at how wholesome this stuff used to be. What happened? You know what I mean? What happened to this community? Incredible stuff. Family party. I don't know what the f are you gonna do. Sit around and eat Chinese food by yourself while crying. People are people in the wow. chat are like that sounds like destiny for sure, dude. Your f fan base is wild, dude. All right, you want to go out tonight, dude? You? What's going on? What's, what happened? Why are you gonna just stiff him like that, dude? That because was rude as- Because they didn't want you to be here, that's why. Oh, you're like standing up for me. Solidarity. It's not gonna brother. hurt my feeling, brother. No, it's fine. No, oh, why the f*** would I help anyone else? You're the only person I've ever done that for. You better feel special. Oh, wow, I do, dude. Well, well, I mean, I- was super cute, but... <laughs> you're cuter, don't worry. In a different way. She's Hassan's true. stream really Long. started to pop off, getting more and more viewers. He ended up spending less and less time at TYT as his stream became more and more lucrative. Okay. All the way up to the point where he went part-time so he could focus on his Twitch. Wow. And things were really going great for him. Double dipping. Do I think with they had sex? No, I don't think so. I don't think that Destiny would sexually assault anybody ever in his entire life, despite the... Uh, Despite the uh, the uh, misinformation being passed around, salary at TYT at an increasing subscriber base on. Twitch. I will say, I did have a weird dream though that Destiny tried to like. It was a very. It's, I think he tried to fucking rape me, bro. It was really weird. <laughs> I don't even remember. I don't understand. Like, I don't know why I was. It was such a weird acid trip. It was so bizarre. I didn't understand it. I was like, I was for some reason. I decided to just drive down to Disney World. Wait, the, 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 the southern Disney weird shit and for some reason I was like oh I didn't need a place to stay and Destiny let me stay he's like oh you can stay in like my hotel I was like okay cool 
and it's such a weird fucking thing. I don't even understand that. And I went to uh, I went to the bathroom, and when I came, like I was sitting on the couch, and he was sitting on another couch, and then I went to a bathroom, and then I came out, and he had moved the couches. And I was like, what the fuck? Like putting them next to each other. And then he tried to like fucking. He tried to he tried to fuck me. He tried, like he was like was massaging. My- <laughs> He was massaging my back, bro. And he, I was like, nah, I'm not fucking down with this. So then he tried to get me to fuck him. It was so weird. I felt very uncomfortable after that. Not because I had a weird, like, fucking weird gay sex dream, but because, like, I don't know. It was fucking crazy. Isn't that really weird? That's such a weird... That's such a weird... <laughs> that's so weird. And I, I tried to get hard and like fucking in, in the dream, I remember, but I was like, it wasn't working. You know, I felt very uncomfortable. I felt a little violated, Destiny. So I think you deserve me. A, you owe me a fucking apology. <laughs> I think you owe me an apology for fucking being, you know, overstepping your bounds in, the, in a dream I had. Really fucked up shit, bro. It's really fucked up shit. Yeah. Which, Crazy quite shit, the right? morally Crazy inconsistent shit. little socialist this guy was. And the bromance with Destiny really started to pop off, so much so that when what his son- What I miss? Quite the morally inconsistent little- Things were really going great for him, double dipping with a salary at TYT and an increasing subscriber base on Twitch? Quite True. the morally inconsistent little socialist this hey, guy where's was. My, where's my and where's the bromance my with Destiny really started to pop off. Nice. So much so that when Hassan ran into some issues where he had no place to stream for 10 days, Destiny offered for him to stay over at his house and stream from there. I uh, I, I was like, all right, whatever. Well, I don't have anything. Like, I, I don't have anything. I have no option. I, I'm in the next 11 days. So much so that, like, Steven was uh, DMing Steven. me on Discord and saying, hey, you know what? If you don't have a place to live, buddy, like you can come oh, stay with me. It's incredible. okay. What a good guy. Destiny is a f- great guy. But little did anyone know, this bromance was about to take a dark turn. Oh, no. And it all started with Destiny criticizing Hassan's take on Kamala Harris. So I've kind of done this thing in the past that people have been critical of me for, where I kind of... um. I think I've picked a couple of like things that I think Hassan or other people have said about like Joe Biden and I've said I don't really feel like I don't really feel like these points were made in good faith. Most people are usually very critical of me because it's Hassan's job to do this investigative reporting and that I need to um I need to give more credit to him. Damn, and, he's not even looking at the camera, dude. This is just fucking cuck energy, does not he? And when I started to go through the claims in this video about Kamala Harris, Almost every single thing Hassan says in this video is either dead wrong or horribly stretched um, out of out of what's actually happening. After I went wow. through it, I was kind of wondering, like, am I like hardcore? Am I like anti-Hassan? Am I projecting my hatred of lefty people onto Hassan? Am I trying to just like, oh, I'm gonna disagree with everything because I hate that? Um, and I really tried to look at it. I like where I'm being like, I feel like, okay, am I being objective? Um, I don't know. It's really hard for me to tell. Which led to a debate okay. of sorts that ended up getting pretty heated. Fast forward a bit further and Destiny was watching one of Hassan's videos calling out Pete Buttigieg, where Hassan makes some lowball remarks saying Pete Booty Judge, which in- <laughs> That's kinda of funny. It's like a it's like a gay joke and a dad joke together. It's a literal gay dad joke. Uh, Pete Booty Judge, I would have said that. I would have said that every day of the fucking week, and I don't care. That's funny. That's just stupid. It's just dumb fucking dad humor. I think that's hilarious, brother. That is hilarious. Context of him being Got gay him. seemed homophobic to Destiny. Oh, uh, who cares? Destiny, so shut up. he called him out for it. Really? Being- Destiny called that out? I feel like, why? Why did Destiny call that out? This motherfucker makes jokes all the time. Why did he do that? What was the, what was the, what was the, on, like, honest to God, what was the motivation for that? Cause like that is not destiny today. So like, why did he feel the need to talk about that? Was it, was he in like a fucking super like fucking, uh, you know, uh, sensitivity arc or what the hell was that? Like, why did, why did he do that? I wonder. Being the insecure little headed socialist he is took a pretty big problem with being called out like that in a public forum. 
This boiling point ended up sparking into a fiery explosion when Destiny defended saying the N-word in a joking manner with his friends in private. Yeah, see, like, don't you don't you think that, like, it's isn't it, like, over the little weird to criticize him for saying Pete Booty Judge, but then taking the stance of saying the N-word in private? And, like, listen, I get the point. You know, like, you probably, I personally, you know, you should, you're, you're really trying not to say any of these bad words in at all. But, you know, you say them in private, like, it's, it's your privacy of your own home, you know, you can't really thought police or, or you know, it's whatever. So it is what it is. I get it. But I feel like, how do you, how do you have, like, how are you going to fucking melt down over, how are you going to get upset? over saying Pete Booty Judge, which is very funny, by the way. But then have, like, the base take of, like, hey, as you could throw off, you could roll off N-words as long as you're in the privacy of your own home, you know? This basically gave a jaded Hassan the fuel he needed to attack Destiny and lord this information over his head in an attempt to invalidate everything Destiny has ever said. Okay, so Destiny thought that lefties were generally engaging in homophobia with Pete because he was one of the more moderate candidates. Okay, so it was on the foundation that like he was a gay, or he was a more moderate candidate, and so it was more about like the shitting on him. Okay, all right, sure. Said, and prop himself up as the king of lefty politics on Twitch. In effect, it worked. From the outside looking in. I, I can't help but to feel bad for Destiny and the bromance they were having. Oh. Hassan and his massive ego was that just were they, were they kissing? And the bromance no. they were having. Hassan That's and his massive now. ego just couldn't handle being criticized by Destiny publicly. He just threw it all away for personal gain, friendship be damned. <sighs> Hassan acts like he just can't be friends with someone he has such a big moral disagreement with, but in my opinion, I think Hassan is still just butthurt. Yeah. I could go on and on about this subject, but in effort of not making this three hours long, let's move on to the next bullet point in this story. True. It's so funny. I wish I could find the 60k a year Hassan and get him to critique this video of a guy that's making at least a quarter mil a year. Like making all these arguments about not paying some poor ass intern like my youtube channel wow. makes zero dollars in revenue okay it makes zero dollars in revenue why aren't you uh, distributing your profit what profit can i distribute ah more socialist hypocrisy you gotta love it am i right so yeah i mean like this is one of those really interesting things and i i, I remember okay so i know people always they, they talk about the Hassan taking the Twitch deal. And I agree. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that there's a problem with like, you don't know, be rich social. I mean, it's a little weird, but you know, you're taking a, you're taking a virtuous stance that like people need to be more responsible with their money. You know, obviously you're taking the stance that the government needs to regulate it better, but like, that's not going to happen without activism. You need to be the change you want to see. So if you have a problem, like you need to be the one you need to show and lead by example and show people like, Hey, this isn't a problem. But you know, he engaged, he, he took an exclusivity with contract with Twitch um, which is a subsidiary of Amazon, and with that, and like he criticizes Amazon for horrible work conditions, but it's like you're bolstering their company up. So why not uh, stream somewhere else? You can stream on Twitch and other platforms. You just can't get donos, right? So you could stream on YouTube. You could stream on Twitch, and you could. This is what Destiny does. He streams on it. He made his own website with all his money, and he apparently gives the layout out too to people whoever they want, which is so incredible stuff. You know, he cre you know you create that space. Um, but he didn't want to do that because he wanted to optimize the amount of money that he gets. And that's like hypocritical. And then so now also on top of that, because of this, he has to stream for a certain amount of time. I think it's per week or there's like some kind of a quota. Well, guess what the fucking problem there is, is that um, he's not entertaining enough and arguably nobody is, but not entertaining enough to actually get pe people involved. So he just simply watches other people's videos and I watch people's videos all the time. But like this video is fucking 30 minutes long. We've been talking for like four, probably 45. Okay. I want to say so far this video has been like an hour long from how the fucking, how, how tall, how much I'm talking. Like I've already doubled it. You know what I mean? So like we're providing something, whether you think it's entertaining or not, it's irrelevant. But so, but Tassan will just put other people's videos on and non react. And like he will barely credit them. Like he'll put them on the screen in a way that makes it very difficult for you to see um 
who's who's talking if you pop in randomly other than if you catch the beginning and end of it but we know that that's not how people watch streams most people watch streams like in a disconnected way they do other things while they watch a stream for the most part some people engage a bit but and so like you're not really doing a service to those people and that is like a theft of labor i honestly think so like even if it's legally justifiable like okay well you know a lot of things that are bad are legally justifiable but you like again should be the, the change you want to see so you at the very least you could you could credit these creators in some capacity when people complain that he was just watching them on the stream like took fucking piss or made food what did he do he's like oh you'll react harder react harder and if you notice there's a trend from and i notice this more in leftist communities i don't know if there's like this is in uh, all the communities i'm just gonna be honest with you but i've noticed most from hassan it's the concept of memeing the argument when you have nothing intelligent to say so instead like okay here's an argument like hey you're not really reacting enough to, to the content i feel like you're just taking my content oh, oh you want me to react harder you want me to react harder haha <laughs> react harder react harder react harder react harder um, or I'll criticize Hassan and then he'll say I'm fat and then he'll go, Oh, 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 ad hominem. And it's like, okay, like, I don't really care about that, but you're just exposing that you, there's no depth to your thought. Um, or like when people are like, Hey, you shouldn't have taken an exclusivity contract. It's like, oh, you want me to starve? You think I just can't work? It's like, okay, dude, chill the fuck out. Um, so it's just constantly, it, it's, it's just like this constant berate of memes, um, to just, to, to just, to pretend that you're correct you know what i mean it's just crazy so as has yeah was oh oh I, you don't want me to have a, a mansion oh i guess i just need to be homeless now like holy fuck hassan like he's so hyperbolic. he's such a victim in his own fucking mind it's incredible stuff popping off on twitch and raking in that tyt salary at the same time he was also trying to spark life into his youtube channel but at this point he was spreading himself pretty thin between 8 hour streams on Twitch and still appearing on TYT, he had no time to edit videos. That's where this whole yeah, story- Yeah, I remember he was like, I was working so hard, bro. And it's like, that's honestly pretty normal. I'm not, I'm just, just being honest with you. Like back in the day who I would, I'd work like an eight to 10 hour shift and then he'd come home and then you play video games for like fucking 10, like, you know, six hours or 10, eight hours or whatever. That's pretty much normal shit, bro. Like, I, I know that you made money from it, but I'm just saying, like, I, I just feel like he really hammed up this experience of how hard he fucking worked. But there's a difference between, like, working in some cushy-ass desk job where you're fucking around all day versus cleaning up literal shit off the floor <laughs> in, like, public transportation buses. People who work, like, manual labor jobs are, like, obviously, it's a fucking whole other breed and shit. But, you know, whatever. It comes into play. A two hundred. Oh, a two, oh! I can't have a two hundred thousand car. We want to do fucking walk everywhere, dude. Do you know how hot it is in California sometimes? Do you know how? Do you know that the weather is a thing? <laughs> do you know that weather exists, bro? Because I didn't fucking know that. Because I don't leave my house. I don't touch grass. Funny bitch. People in his community that were eager to do that for him. But Hassan couldn't just exploit them for free labor while touting of all this not. socialist nonsense, could he? Of course not. Well, that's where you oh, were wrong. Oh shit! One of these people that wanted to edit got in contact with Hassan and they exchanged details. Hassan would feed him ideas and he would edit them- Okay. Ugh. Fuck this game. What are some examples of the breakdowns of vids? The music isn't good. Jump cards aggressive or too aggressive, manicured, you don't have a Okay, so these he's giving he's coaching him on what he wants. I want zoom ins and distortions like zoomer shit. PewDiePie edits are very good, IMO. I think I could absolutely do that. Wow. Incredible. 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 So he's asking for like legit edits. Like I literally just find start and stops. Like if anything I need I could probably use help with thumbnails, but I'm fucking uh, I, you know, I, I do those myself. Them up and upload it to a Hassan edits channel. Then Hassan would download those edited videos and upload them to his channel. While all this was happening, the guy was making it pretty clear he was trying to get a job editing for Hassan. Yeah. But Hassan just kept stringing the guy on, saying his YouTube channel wasn't profitable yet, touting some shit about his YouTube channel only making like a hundred dollars up to that point. So hundred dollars what a day? I mean, either way, like, so here's the thing, dude. Like, okay, I, I get what you're saying. Hey, this channel isn't profitable yet. And like, whatever, that's fine. But like, then come up with a, then come up with a percentage agreement. Come up with like a, like an agreement that's like, okay, I will pay you, um, like 50% of the things or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, don't just fucking sit around and like fuck around and not give this guy any money 
or just give them some like if you're making good money and you're trying to get into YouTube, like pay like okay, I'll give you like fifty bucks a video or something. Like, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be a lot, but well, it should be decent. Though. He couldn't pay anyone to edit till his YouTube channel was profitable. Totally sidestepping the fact that he makes over a hundred k a year via Twitch subs and a fifty k salary from TYT on top of that. TYT. And who knows how much in donations in bits. But for some reason, this socialist touting Che Guevara impersonator couldn't find fifty or a hundred dollars per edit yeah, to right. throw at this guy. Apparently not. You left-wing leaning parasite! You expect me to sit here and listen to your what dribble? the? F wow! Like my YouTube channel makes zero dollars in revenue. Okay, it makes zero dollars in revenue. So, like, it's really cute that people are out there going, oh, man, why aren't you... Isn't it funny that this is where it starts? There's, like, always an hypocrisy. There's always an excuse for why his behavior doesn't need to be appropriate. You know what I mean? Like, dude, you want, you want like, professional quality... Like, dude, I don't do professional quality shit. I fucking upload a stream of me playing fucking World of Warcraft while I watch a video of someone else about Hassan. You know what I mean? So I don't do zoom ins or whatever, blah blah blah. And I think that's totally fine. I I don't give a shit. I do low effort shit, and I do that this way. I don't have to pay anybody, you know, whatever. But if I did, I would obviously pay somebody money for it. But you could have you you didn't even come up with an agreement with him. You could have been like, yeah, let's do a tester, and we'll see. And like once my YouTube becomes profitable, I can give you like thirty three percent of the profits or blah blah blah. I don't know. You know what I mean? Uh, distributing your profit. What profit can I distribute? It makes zero dollars. It's so funny. It's so interesting, though, because like you're you're investing in a new media. You're investing in, in the development of a new platform for yourself. So like, you know, that's your you know, you should take a loss. It's so unfortunate that you would you would you would uh, steal the labor of your own fans, people who look at you as a virtuous socialist. That's the defender of the middle class. This is what I'm talking about, bro. Like the other day, I had a guy who made really cool edits on YouTube. I liked it. It was pretty cool. And he and he made a couple, and I reacted. I was like, "Hey, do you want to try making like clips for me?" And like, I'll I'll, I'll see. I'll, you know, we we talked about a price, but I said I just want to experiment with it first, um, and see how it goes. And like, I thought, I, honestly, I decided against it because uh, mostly because like I was trying to put the clips on TikTok, and TikTok just keeps like banning the shit out of me. You know, it doesn't matter what I do. So I was like, you know what? This isn't a good idea. I don't want to invest like a lot of money into this. It is not like a good idea because it's not going to like, I'm not going to be able to like have this take off. Um, and so I was like, hey, bro, like he made me a few clips and I, and, and I was just, I just gave him a hundred bucks and I said, I'm sorry, dude, I'm just going to go in a different direction. Um, do you know what I mean? Like you don't have to fucking, <laughs> you, you know, it doesn't have to be huge. It's not a big deal. You know, like I have the fucking money, you know? So I don't know, bro. I don't know. I wish I could find the 60k a year Hassan and get him to critique this video of a guy that's making at least a quarter mil a year like making all these arguments about not paying some poor ass intern trying to like edit videos for him to like get a little bit of money uh, but I feel like if this is like some shit that you talk about constantly about how important it is that workers aren't exploited and that you care so much about like all this shit like well, what the f like so even excluding donations, assuming he maintains this consistent sub count, 250000 a year. Uh, I just want to first of all uh, start off by saying that um, I'm sorry for not compensating any of my Twitch chatters for all of the delicious bites and memes uh, that they put out. Oh, so he decided, to meme, he decided to take the meme argument. Don't you, what did I say before? This is a consistent pattern with Hassan. So he's like, I, I, I want to, I apologize to not like paying uh, the, the Twitch chatters who put in memes. Like, wow, this little scumbag fucking cunt can't take any criticism, bro. Like he's memeing the argument because he's got nothing. What, dude, like literally educating myself on Hassan. There's never been an origin point on Hassan that's ever been genuine. I, ge I just genuinely believe that. I, I don't, I don't understand why people watch him. Um, not because of his content, but I have a huge problem with people who are incredibly fucking morally inconsistent. I think that it's fucking disgusting to prey on people. And dude, like, listen, on any group, but like in this instance, like a young people who want a better future, I prey on them. Um, to, to, and like by acting virtuous and pretending you give a fuck about them when you don't know shit. 
Like this is this is a huge problem, and this is what I talk about. People don't. Some people didn't get it. I think most people do understand it. Where I have a, I have a big, I have a problem with uh, fucking people who advocate for the middle class and don't know what it's like to be middle class, like truly middle class. Like oh Hassan, oh well, there's been times where I only made sixty a year. This motherfucker making like sixty thousand dollars a year, uh, instant free job at like a fucking. But his uncle owns the, the the company. He's never had to like financially struggle. He got a he got a rocket launcher to the top. Like his first job, he was making like sixty a year. Like incredible stuff, bro. Like his first real job like being being uh middle class to me isn't really about money as much as it's about the struggle that you have to go through like it's a particular experience it's like the it's like being in a scenario where you have to you know pick and choose what you do with your money and you have to be more efficient and like you know a you'll have a fucking a ghost in your house <laughs> and then you'll have like a bad scenario that happens where like it's like a two hundred dollar payment and it just throws off your whole month, you know what I mean? And his son's never had to like worry about any of these things in any real capacity. And so this guy just fucking does not care. He can't identify with people. He doesn't give a shit. He's just a fucking asshole that you like that like, wep- like utilizes. Um, I I don't even know. I honestly don't know why people listen to him because he's he's not even like smooth. Honestly, I don't get it. Like he's attractive, and I feel like that's all it is for like a lot of shallow kids. They're like this guy makes my pee pee tingle, and then that's all it really takes. Or they're hanging on to like the last dregs of uh, you know what he maybe he used to be, which was more intelligent. But I don't think that there's ever been a time where I would consider him, uh, you know, particularly intelligent ever. I just don't get it. Like he doesn't do anything positive for any community. Uh, he's not saying anything particularly intelligent. Like, what is the point? What's the fucking point? Why is this all over here? What's up, baby? How you doing? I'm in the middle of a segment. What's up? Sorry. Do you need me? Okay. Switch chat. Uh, I, I apologize to Lautrec. Lautrec. Tell ya, quick care what people say. Who Van really cares anyway? That's why I'm hoping you're impressed. You impress yet? Because I have not promised. He's memeing about the emotes? Yeah, I mean, I probably would pay somebody for emotes too, bro. I don't know. Uh, I didn't realize that uh, at some point, every single person was made for stuff for everyone in the community to enjoy. Uh, to turn around and be like, hey man, like, you know, you're pretty fucked up. What an asshole. He fucking just memed everything there. It seems like we, we can acknowledge that there's a difference between somebody like having fun and making like a little emote uh, for you and shit like that versus well versus like an actual whole ass edited video that takes like tens of hours. But even if they did do an emote, like you could still pay them if they do like a box of emotes for you or something. You don't have to give them a whole fucking ton of money. You know what I mean? But like, holy fuck to like just meme the chat like that. He's such a dickhead. Our socialist woke bay ain't that I'll probably do the Amanda, Ty- Amanda Bynes video on Miller stream. Hassan has a mask he wears for his woke socialist buddies in stream, but in reality, he probably isn't far off from his misogynistic frat boy ways of his not so distant past. So as you, I'm would really ex- surprised this video didn't blow up more. Like I remember avoiding watching it because I was like, oh, this was a time because I, like, for people who know me and my and my content. I give people a significant amount of the benefit of the doubt. People are, they get very angry at me because I will, I, I give people a ton, a tremendous amount of the benefit of the doubt. Like, and that's not an exaggeration. And you know that. Um, and so I was, I didn't watch this because I'm like, eh, it's probably just like another Hassan hit piece or I assumed it was, but like this, we're talking about like months of, of me educating myself in Hassan. And I will tell you, and like I'm, I'm, I'm happy and proud of the way that I interact. I, I'm happy to um, operate in this capacity. I think it's the best way to operate because, like, it leaves, like, it, it leaves nothing to. Oh, fuck, it's pull. It leaves nothing to interpretation. Like, you cannot, you, you really just can't, like, in any valid sense, claim that I'm just doing, uh, you know, this to be dishonest because I try my best to be as honest as possible. <laughs> Um, and give like benefit that this is ho- but he's terrible <laughs> he's fucking horrible expect this blew up and someone someone popped in hey stop hate watching i know you're just memeing bro you're so silly in his sussy baka royally, his editor ended up making a reddit post where he detailed how he felt he was being exploited by hassan for free labor and things ended up getting pretty heated, as you would imagine. Uh. Hassan tried to sidestep all the drama and save his socialist image by... 
my husband and I make 70k a year with two kids and I tip my coffee with five dollars in the morning I feel that I feel that I feel that I feel it doggy I try to give good tips too because we do like honestly like I'm, I'm incredibly like fucking beyond fortunate um with like how like I, I do I do well and I do well on my own terms and that's something that I never could ever say like it's so it's it's like I fucking um like I don't take I there's like there's like advertisements I would do for instance but I never have had to take an advertisement that I didn't want to do because I've been able to in, in, in this sphere I've been able to like do well financially by myself like well with like Twitch or or other YouTube and Twitch pay me um but like I don't have to do like some bullshit advertisement. I'll have to like plug some fucking I don't know bullshit. Like, oh here buy some for gold. Oh get some of this. You know I've been able to pick and choose what I like I actually want to do. And I don't really do anything because there's really like I've had raid shadow legends. Like fuck that shit. Are you kidding me? Fucking raid. Get the fuck out of here. Some predatory app. I'm not gonna you know. Um, but we're doing really well. And like you know I try to fucking like I try to tip really well too because like what a what a what a fucking privilege. Holy shit. That's how I look at this. I feel like people look at this like honestly. I think Hassan and not to talk about too much, but like only JS same people in the in the context where like they feel entitled to their fame. Um, like there's nothing, there's nothing that they they're not doing anything particularly intelligent. Um, they're not entitled to their fame. They're like actually they're incredibly and completely replaceable. But people watch them, and for some reason they don't acknowledge that. Like, listen, not for nothing, I'm stunned. <laughs> Not for nothing. Like I know I'm replaceable, um, and that's okay, man. That's why I appreciate it every day. But I also I guarantee you that I'm less replaceable than Hassan. Uh, there's nothing going on up there. It's a fucking like a, a brain fart. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's the people who it's the least talented individuals who feel the most entitled to their talent. I think it's because uh, there must be something that go on with their their looks, like some kind of history or pattern, or just getting whatever they want. Based on something, I don't really know, but there's an entitlement complex there. I don't know. By giving in and paying the editor, which sort of worked for people that simp for Hassan, but a lot of people can see what really happened. And those people still throw it at him in contention to this day. Good. Anyway, let's move on to what made Hassan fall off TYT almost entirely. What was. Wait, did he. We as you would imagine. Hassan tried to sidestep all the drama and save his socialist image by giving in and paying the editor. Wait, so he shot, he finally decided he was going to try to pay after he criticized everybody? But like at that point, it's just social pressure. It's not actually like... This is the problem here, is it doesn't matter if he did or didn't pay the person. Um, what matters is like he, pro he proclaimed to be a, a socialist that's on the side of the working class and then he simply did not maintain the energy in real life the, it's a it's kind it's a non-redeemable factor like there's certain things like let's say you're somebody who engages and you talk a lot about sexual assault or women's issues and then you go and you take advantage of women, like Modern Warrior, for instance. And you go and you take advantage of women and say, like, oh, let's have sex. I'm, I'm not dating anybody else. And then it turns out you're dating a bunch of other people for you, that you met on, like, your platform. Like, you're irredeemable because you you already have taken the stance that you're educated on what it means to be educated. Uh, excuse me. You, you've, you've taken the stance that you understand what it means to be uh, what it means to be respectful to women. And yet, you're fundamentally disrespecting women by taking advantage of them for sex by not being like, like, uh, like, uh, you know, um, you're not being like transparent. This is like a Hassan thing. You're, you're claiming to be this like virtuous. Um, you're claiming to be like this virtuous uh, socialist defender of the middle class, and then what happens? The working class, and what happens? You take advantage of people the second that it becomes like uh, you know easy for you to do. As these are these are the problems and like you really can't walk back from that because you're not in a place of lack of education you have the education you've just decided uh not to go along with it you've decided not to to, to go along with that education so which sort of worked for people that simp for Hassan, but a lot of people can see what really happened and those people still throw it at him in contention to this day good Anyway, let's move on to what made Hassan fall off TYT almost entirely. Gotcha, let's do it. What was your reaction uh, when you first uh, heard this? 
<laughs> uh, well, wow, he was triggered, wasn't he? I mean, I mean that is yeah. the definition of a leftist getting triggered. Didn't he go to war and like literally lose his eye because some Mujahideen, a brave soldier, die hole with their dick? Isn't that how? See, like, here's what uh, he's being intentionally antagonistic. Like, he doesn't care about the nine. This is the thing. This is all part of the nine eleven take thing, where uh, he 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 weaponized the actual conversation around uh, you know United States accountability for their negative actions and their role in creating nine eleven, and he he doesn't care. He doesn't care about that. He doesn't care about that. What he cares about is he cares about a situation that he can weaponize to be intentionally aggressive and antagonistic. In general, it's 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 like it's literally it's the same energy as uh, people who deplatform child or, or not deplatform. They try to go after like child predators in like that vigilante style, and then they end up like bullying the person that goes to meet up with people. And you go like, well, yeah, but it's just a pedophile, and I agree. But they don't care about the pedophile. Okay, they don't give a fuck whether that kid fucking that, like these kids are raped. What they care about is a situation where they feel justified in um in bullying somebody and that's what this is it's like hey there's a criticism for america really fucked up criticism i'm just going to use that as a, as a chance to just be incredibly divisive right he doesn't care about messaging he doesn't care about getting a message out which doesn't that's why his take on like defund the police is absolutely worthless dog shit fucking garbage um because i remember criticizing him on a video he obama was like hey we should we should run with reform the police it makes more sense this way we focus on the message which is getting the police to be better not taking money away and he's like no you shouldn't do that and just like comes all over himself because it's all a virtue signal he doesn't care about outcomes he doesn't care about optics he doesn't care about presentation and he doesn't care about actually getting something done sasan is the kind of person that if you actively ask him if you could press this button and everything would be fixed tomorrow would you do it he would say no because he benefits from the system uh that oppresses the middle class because he gets to virtue signal about it and that's the reality of the situation how he lost his eye america deserved 9 11 dude i'm saying it oh my this was quite a spicy chapter in the tales of hassan piker one night while being the toxic reactionary he is he ended up on a video with dan crenshaw on joe rogan Crenshaw was talking about there being no evidence of voter suppression, and then about foreign policy. This really seemed to trigger Hassan. So badly, he went off saying America deserved 9-11. And something about a Mujahideen soldier making love to Crenshaw's eye hole? Hence why he is blind? It came off way more offensive than I'm making it out to be. This outburst on his Twitch channel was controversial enough for Chank to make him come on TYT and louder? apologize. Like randomly. Where Hassan looked like a scolded child that was just saying what their parent wanted to hear. Oh, you can see it right in his eyes. Just watch his face. Just watch his face. Look at the mannerisms. Chank to make him come on TYT and apologize. Look at this. Where Hassan looked like a scolded child that was just saying what their parent wanted to hear. Look so at they it. No eye contact, like fucking looking down. He's pissed. He does not believe the apology. Would get off their back. Uh, Hassan, uh, welcome. And uh, listen, you're on because uh, you said uh, some things that a lot of people, including myself, find very offensive. Uh, you did not say it on the Young Turks Network. You said it on your own Twitch channel. So uh, you said America deserved 9-11. Did you mean that? No. I'm yeah, you did. So, bro, it's incredible because you've been getting free advertisements from the from from the Young Turks by your uncle. Your uncle ad like promoted your channel for free. He built you. Your uncle built you. He allowed you to advertise for free on ad spots that would cost a lot of money, quite a bit more than paying your editors to create YouTube videos. Um and then you're gonna like act like a fucking idiot child. Like you're you're my age, so you knew what are you were in your twenty mid twenties. You knew that like it was your you had a, a a reflection in some capacity on your uncle, but you don't give a fuck. And so this moment probably had a pretty negative impact on the young Turks. And look at the, your, your uncle's talking to you like you're a fucking like he's like oh well Hassan you know you had this rough time and like it, he's he's giving you such a benefit that bro this is embarrassing. Like you don't give a you you can't even treat your family with respect. 
That's fucking incredible to me. You can't even treat your own uncle with like any any respect and any loyalty. It seems like your entire uh you know interaction with your uncle has been one of of resource uh, uh, theft. Like my uncle got me a job at like bus company. I respected the fucking hell out of him, and I made sure I I I was held to a higher standard. And you're not. You're definitely not. You said my uncle would hold me to a higher standard. I'm not seeing any of that. You're literally he's baby fucking you here. I would have fired your ass and smacked you in the fucking jaw if you if uh, if you were my nephew. I would have if we're saying that stupid ass shit and reflecting so poorly on the company that like I, my understanding is that Cenk built from the ground up whether you like the guy or not and you're going to disrespect his brand like that and then you're going to turn around and you're going to play like oh hey let's let's reformat the entire oh let's reformat the whole narrative uh, I created Twitch politics and also my uncle is a meanie bobini it's like what are you fucking stupid like what a dumb fuck thing to do like where's your loyalty at and I know I'm going in really hard but that's because I have a lot of family loyalty like I fucking respected the hell out of my uncle like this motherfucker my, my uncle got a job and he helped me get a job like holy shit like what a life saving fucking moment and I and I worked that hard at that job and I was able to rise up a little bit because like they appreciated me there because I did a good job meanwhile like what the fuck are you doing you know like every other day it seems like he has to walk something back you do some dumbass bro shit oh well we gotta we got that back and then you say some like incredibly antagonistic shit he promotes you on his platform for free by allowing you to shout out your twitch it's like holy shit you didn't earn anything in your entire life and for once you can't even be a genuine fucking person like and he doesn't mean anything he's saying because he, he loves that take it's his favorite take obviously not within context i was simply obviously referencing not. the fact that all of the foreign policy decisions and our arming of insurgent groups in the region and our efforts in destabilizing the middle east have a direct consequence a boomerang effect rather if you will but you understand so then why didn't you say that oh Because one day Hassan uh, l learned a really shallow understanding of like world politics and our involvement in other countries, and he decided to take that and what, turn it into a really antagonistic take. He was looking for the excuse to say this, and then he said it, and he loved it. He was coming himself. While he's wearing a shirt that says Malding, he's intentionally trying to be antagonistic the entire time. Like That was his entire fucking brand. It's just like, holy shit. Like, what the fuck? Stand now, and not just now, but you understood fairly soon after you said it that saying Americans deserve 9 11 is a completely different statement and one that's wrong. Well, maybe you can chalk it up to English being my second language or whatever. Wow, what a fucking loser. You can chalk it up to being English as my second language? Shut up. You want to chalk it up to? It's, it's shut. What a loser. Bro, he's weaponizing his identity as a fucking Turkish person, right? He's from Turkey. He's weaponizing his identity as a white guy. <laughs> Guys, I have a big, there's a clearly, because like, uh, as dumb as Hassan is, he can articulate himself just fine. It doesn't matter whether he does or doesn't have an accent. He articulates himself perfectly fine. What a stupid fucking non-accountable way to talk about this. This guy is such a disingenuous person. It doesn't matter what country you come from. You can know how to articulate yourself. Like, holy shit. It's messed up that I, that I would even uh, give the opportunity to the right to, to uh, try to morally grandstand on an... Look at this. Look at this. He's not even taking. Now he's framing it into like, oops, my biggest mistake wasn't what I said. It was uh, the fact that what I said was able to be used by conservatives to look at leftists in a negative light. Like, dude, you fucked up. Stop. Who cares about their reaction to your fucking worthless thing that you said? Just because they're conservative doesn't mean that they're not that they're wrong all the time. They're right about this. You're being a little shitbag. An issue like this when they have, uh, they are one hundred percent responsible so nice, here stuff. we are guys the conclusion from frat boy misogynist to woke bay socialist mm -hmm. hassan seems to have been trying to cover up his true identity ever <coughs> since the fall of bro tips but as you guys can see his true colors seem to rear up quite often he pretty clearly isn't what he portrays to the public he is either putting it all on for show or he is the worst socialist I have ever seen. Bro, I guarantee, I honestly think that Hassan had a, ne a profoundly negative impact on the Young Turks. He probably devastated the audience of the Young Turks. Um, 
Wow. He has thrown away friendships and more in effort to pursue fat stacks of cash. True. He adapts some of the most toxic tactics of the right because that reactionary style is popular. And he is not beyond throwing some of the most vile insults I have ever heard. And that, my friends, is Hassan Piker in a nutshell. I had a lot of fun researching for this video. I went really, really deep. I really hope you guys enjoyed this unmasking <sighs> of Hassan Piker. I'd love to do more videos like I'm this in the future, you. so if you're interested in that, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you guys want to support the channel- I bet you guys didn't think I was that fucking big, right? I bet you didn't expect that. You didn't think that I was this big. You didn't expect this to be so fucking- Oh, man. Incredible stuff. Anyway, guys, that was actually was a great video. I'm surprised it doesn't have more views. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And another special shout out to all my Patreon and Twitch subs. If you'd like to support this channel further than you already have by just watching the video alone, go down to the links below where you can sub on my Patreon, which will allow you to get your name on this beautiful black wall. <laughs> uh, or you can go to the Twitch page and you can actually use a free Amazon Prime sub, if you have Amazon Prime, to subscribe. Thank you very much, guys. Take care.